Puppet feet. Adam Krutinger here, and today I'm gonna to show you how to make feet and legs for your puppet. I've waited a while to make this video because I personally don't like putting feet on my puppet. I use most of my puppet for film and TV style work, but I know a lot of people use their puppets for classrooms or maybe you're a ventriloquist and you want legs on your puppet. So after a lot of requests, here we go. I'm gonna start off by drawing the pattern on paper. If you wanna make your own feet, you can draw along with me or you can download this pattern for free from my website down below. Here we go. I want the base of my foot probably to be about five inches tall and probably about three inches wide. You can see you kind of have a, a foot shape going on there. Now I wanna draw some toes. I think this is a funny looking foot. Now I'll cut this out. There you go, that's a nice looking foot. Now you only need to draw one because of course you flip it over to trace it to do the other foot. This is the pattern we're gonna use for the foam and the bottom of the foot. We're gonna make a different piece for the top of the foot and then of course a different piece for the leg. Here we go. First I wanna make the leg, but I wanna find out what the circumference of the leg is gonna be. So let me take a scrap piece of paper here. This is, I'm gonna round it to four and a half inches. So that's how wide I want the base of the leg to be. So let's draft that out. Well, let me do a center line first. And I want the bottom to be four and a half. This is for the fabric part of the leg. Now for the length of the leg, you can make it as long or as short as you want. Whatever is best for your character's design. Fine for most puppets, somewhere between 12 and 15 inches long is usually pretty good. Today I'm gonna to do 13 inches, so let's see how that turns out. So I'm gonna make a mark at the 13 inch right there. And then you can decide how wide you want it to be at the base of the leg. If you want a more realistic leg, you would make it a little bit wider at the top and get skinnier as it gets down to the ankle. A lot of puppets just use a straight tube though. If you wanted this to be a straight tube, you would just trace these lines, those four inch lines, all the way up to the top there, and then that would be your pattern. But if you want it to be a little wider, here's what you can do. Let's say I wanna add an inch to each side. I want it to start to get thicker at about the knee. So if I go down to six and a half, that means my knee would be about there. So that's where I wanna start tapering it up. So I'm gonna just slowly curve it to that line. You don't want too harsh of a curve. If anything, you can make it kind of straight. Now we're not done with this leg pattern yet, but we're gonna cut it out to do the next step. To make sure it's symmetrical, I'm gonna cut it on the fold too. Now, one thing you'll notice, if you kind of wrap this into a little bit of a tube, it's gonna kind of have a little bit of a point where those two edges meet up. It has a little bit of a peak there. We want those to meet at a 180 degree angle, completely flat. So here's what I'm going to do. I want this corner to be a 90 degree angle. One way I can do that is to take my ruler and rather than put it straight with this line, I wanna put it even with the side of the leg like this. That's how I'll know how much to take off. All I have to do is cut this little piece. We have this very gentle curve here that should make this leg meet up much more evenly. Now for the top covering of the foot, here's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna trace most of this foot all the way down to just about here. Now to make the top piece of the foot, I'm gonna trace the bottom of the foot here, and then I wanna draw where the ankle is going to fit. Now I know the circumference by looking at this. If I were to make this into a tube and put it down there, that's how I know how big it is. However, so you guys can see better, I have scrap paper here that I made the same length. That way I can trace this a little bit easier. So now I'm gonna cut this out, but I'm gonna make a little line there first. Now that we have this, I'm gonna make another cut on it that is about from here to there. So it almost cuts it in half, but not completely. And then I'm gonna to start to trace it again. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slowly spread it as it gets lower 
like this to have this foot kind of open up a little bit. So I'll trace the toes normal first before it's spread out. And then I'm gonna slowly spread this out like this. And then I'm gonna finish tracing the outside to about there. I'm not doing the inside of the ankle yet. Now what I'm going to do is lay this back down in, keeping it closed, and I'm gonna draw the front part of the ankle in, trace that in, and now you wanna connect these. So now this is gonna be our new foot pattern for the top of the foot. Notice how it's a little bit wider in the back than this original piece. Now I'll cut it out. Okay, next we're gonna make the foam for inside of the leg. In general, if you subtract about a half inch from both sides, you usually get a good fit. If not, it's at least a good starting point. Here we go. So let me just trace this. I'm gonna mark where the knees are. Subtract about a half inch. All right, let me just mark my knee here. I'll use a pencil. Now with the knee, I like to come in a little bit. So let me find the center, three and a half inches long. So I'll come in about an inch on both sides. Okay, and I just kind of do a little thing like this. Putting this little notch here will make it so that the knee can bend really well. Now just to make sure it's all symmetrical, I'm gonna fold it in half and cut on the fold. And there we have it. All right, now we're gonna put it together. You can use the pattern we just made, or you can print out this one from my website. I'm gonna use the printed one today. I'm gonna use this nice yellow fabric here. Make sure that the stretch is going this way. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is stitch up the feet. I actually don't cut them out to stitch them. What I do is I make sure that I sandwich it between another piece of fabric like this. And you're not gonna stitch all the way. You're just gonna stitch first up to about the toes like that. Now that we have that stitched down here, what I'm gonna do is trace the foot again, but I'm gonna trace this piece, but line it up with those stitch marks, just like this. So I line up those toes, and then I trace around the rest of the foot. Carefully cut it out. Make sure you don't accidentally cut through both pieces since they are different sizes. Okay, next I'm gonna sew the ankle to the circumference of this hole. And these two, it doesn't matter which one is which, either one will fit with either foot. I start out by lining up these corners just like this. And then if you kind of pull this snug, you should be able to get a straight line. Now we'll stitch this too. And now we're gonna stitch up the back of the leg. And I go all the way down the back of the heel. All right, now our legs are all stitched together. Let's make some foam feet. For this, one inch foam works the best. All right, and I'll trace this out. For a thicker foam like this, I like to use a razor blade to cut it out. The scissors can be good for getting in between the toes. Now we're gonna glue the foam feet to the bottom of the fabric feet like this. I like to use contact cement for that, but if you like to use hot glue or something else, go right ahead. It's kind of like putting nail polish on toes, but don't put too much on the fabric. You don't want it to, to bleed through. Now I'll let that dry for about two minutes. Now I'm gonna stick these on just like this. It's almost like a flip-flop. Next, we have to turn these toes inside out. There's a lot of ways to do that. There's a lot of loop turners you uh, might have already. You can just use a pencil to kind of poke it through. But one of my favorite tools is this easy hook and loop turner. There's a link for this on my supply page. You can find that on my website link down below. Next, we're gonna do the foam legs. For that, I like to use a half inch foam like this. But you can use whatever foam you have laying around.
Now I'll let that dry for a couple minutes and then we'll put it together. Okay, and then you're just gonna put it together just like this. But now before I put these in, I wanna stitch up the back of the heels on these feet here. Now to do that, I'm gonna do a stitch that I don't use that often. It's just for closing things up. It's called a ladder stitch. And click the link right here if you wanna see a video that specifically shows how to do the ladder stitch. All right, and there's the feet. Now let's stuff the legs. So here's how I stuff the legs. I just kind of half turn this inside out like this, and I make sure the seam is facing the back. Try to get it all the way down to the ankle. Some people like to actually glue this to the foam foot, but um, I think it gives the feet a little bit more flexibility if you don't do that. And the last thing I do is clean up the seams. And there we have it. Our feet are all finished. Now there's many ways you could attach these. You could use a doll joint to attach it to your puppet. You could stitch it onto your puppet. But one of my favorite methods is to just use a safety pin. Because like I said, I don't put legs on my puppets that often, so I like to be able to take them on and off really quickly. For example, I've got this little guy here, and I could easily pin these legs on him. just like this. So I would just pinch this closed. You could stitch this closed as well. That would make this a little easier. There's one. And there's two. So now this crazy little character has some legs too. Like I said in the beginning, you can kind of scale these legs to fit any size puppet that you want. I didn't plan to make these legs for this guy. I just noticed it was the same color and figured let's try it on. I think they're a little big for this puppet. This is actually the small fry pattern, but done with fur instead. Anyway, if you use any of my patterns to make puppets or any of the techniques that I use too, I'd love to see it. Make sure to tag me on Instagram and I'll be sure to check it out. Well, that's it for now. See you next time.